How to beat Magnus Carlsen eight times in 2021. Introducing his opponent, Levon Aronian. He's from Armenia, 38 years old. He is rapid world number nine and classical world number five. He switched federations and now plays for the USA. Now, in this video, we're going to look at two of Aronian's victories against Carlsen. The other six games will be in other videos, which I will mention later. Aronian has white, Carlsen has black, d4, d5, knight 3, knight 6, and bishop f4. Very interesting to see Aronian play the London against Magnus because Magnus really brought this opening back into fashion. This game and the next game took place in the Grand Chess Tour. c5, e3, knight c6, and knight d2. So in the London, the knights defend each other. Take, take, queen b6, you put pressure on the d4 and a b2 pawn, so you go knight b3. With this knight move, both knights now defend the central pawn, also the white queen defends it. Bishop g4, you pin the knight to the queen, a4. Attack the queen with a5 next, so a6, and after a5, queen back to d8. Very useful move from black to actually play a6 himself. So then the bishop can't actually get to b5. Also, it stops white playing a6. h3, bishop back, g4, bishop g6, and knight e5. White has more space, knight d7, challenging the knight twice. So, Levon, he makes a decision, he grabs the bishop, take, take, and c3. You have a pawn chain in the middle. Now, the bishop might go to g2 to attack the pawn on d5. No, he actually picks a better spot. After e6, you go bishop d3. You don't need the bishop on g2. Knight f6, queen f3. So, the queen protects the pawn on h3, and is the king going to castle? No. Bishop d6 offering a trade. Black has less space. King f1. Typical in these kind of positions. You just sidestep your king. Then you give yourself the option to go h4, h5. And it's very useful that the rook is still on h1. Take, take. Knight d7. King g2, g5. Good move because after queen g3 you can see this pawn is actually covering the dark squares. Also, it's going to be difficult for white to play h4. Rook c8. Rook e1, queen c7, offering a queen trade, but he's going to let Magnus take Levon's queen take. And the cool thing is he doesn't actually take with the king, he takes with the pawn. With this pawn recapture now, he controls the two dark squares, king e7, knight f3, and after f6, one way to play is h4. Making progress on the king side, but bishop f5 played. Attack e6 with a bishop and a rook, knight f8 defends it, and now c4. Threatening to open up the center, even though the king is still in the middle. Say that again. C4. Opening up the center, because black's king is still in the middle, so he sidesteps. Now after take, we have a capture fest. Take the bishop, take the knight, take the pawn, you attack the knight, so he takes back, and take. Now what? Five pawns each, two rooks a knight. Rook c1, let's get the c file. If you take, then white can take back, and he can come in on the c-file, so no recapture. Knight g6. d5, forcing a decision on the rook. The rook goes back, and knight d4, so white is making very clear progress. The knight has a couple of entry squares. Four minutes for white, six minutes for black. Remember, both sides started with 15 minutes on the clock. Rook d8, you attack the pawn, looks like a good move. But this actually wastes some time with knight e6. You cannot take the pawn because you lose your rook. And you cannot take this rook because knight takes d8 is check. Then you take the rook back and your rook up. Knight e6, white is taking over after rook e8. b4 getting space, knight e5. So the rook attacks the knight but is defended by the pawn. So really cool tactic here. And I'm pretty sure Magnus missed this. Knight takes g5 check. Winning a pawn. If you take, then you take the rook first. And then you take and then white is winning. Knight takes g5 check. King e7. Knight back in. g5. Knight c5. Attacking b7. Rook d8. So coming back to attack d7. Rook d1 defend. King out the way. Rook d4 to defend this, rook c7, rook e2, rook d6, knight e4, you attack the rook, and here we go, <laughs> rook d7, and now, the funny thing is Levon, he's played this move twice in the same game, knight takes g5, check, Levon has won two pawns with the same move, king g6, knight f3, 
Five pawns for white, three pawns for black. Take, take. Rook c1, push. In. Take, take, take. So what's really happened here? A transition. d6, you're going to go rook e7 next, but Aronian is okay giving up this pawn because he gets the pawn on b7. Take, 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 take. Check, up, take, up, take. Sidestep to c5, and you are just coming in, and white is completely winning. White is going to win that pawn, but let's just see the rest. If Magnus didn't resign, let's say he pushes his pawn, check, and then take. Now, the rook actually has plenty of time to get back. Back, and here, actually, it's quite important to throw in a check first, then the rook can come back. Now, black wastes a move to defend it, and now you push. The reason it's very important is because of this. If now black plays rook f4, take, take, and you win with a7. This is a very nice endgame tactic to look out for in these rook, these pawn endgames. Push, queen, queen, and you win. This game was in the grand chess tour. They both have five minutes each, plus three seconds per move. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We have the Italian and bishop g5. You pin kick it away. Magnus actually loves this move. Magnus has played this many times with white. So an early pin, a6, giving yourself a typical retreating square for the bishop, just in case you get hit with b4 or d4. Castle, castle. a4, get space. Knight a5, attack the bishop, and now g5. Bishop goes back, knight a5. Pretty funny here. Both Levon's knights are on the edge of the board, but the knight on h5 is going to grab the bishop pair. b4, so you kick it away. That's one disadvantage to actually chasing the bishop. So he takes first and then drops the knight back. Knight h2. Now, what's the point of this move? You're going to go g4. With the pawn on e4, clamp down on f5. Because black needs to free his position with f5, which is a pawn break. King up. So then f5 is now a threat. So Magnus has to play g4. And it would be perfect if one of these knights could land on f5. Queen f6, g3, maybe f4, knight e7, king up, so definitely f4 because he's got out of this pin. Knight g8, defending that pawn, which uh, looks very, very strange to me. I can't, I just do not understand knight g8. I would have played knight g6 here. But Levon played knight g8, f4, a blunder. Now, Magnus, he's just sacrificing this pawn. But why? Why would Magnus sack a pawn here? Because after take, you go d4. It's an idea seen in this line. You give up a pawn and you shut out this bishop. But today, it didn't work out for Magnus. Knight actually now comes back in the game because the pawn structure has completely changed. Knight c4, now d5. Black is taking over. e5, you attack the queen. But why is this a blunder? Queen c6. Now the knight has to move out of the way. But Magnus, he doesn't move it out of the way yet, he sacks a pawn, b5. So then the queen doesn't take this pawn. b5, take, 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 now the knight moves, and now knight g6. So yeah, it's quite funny actually, this knight was here, it's come back, it's come here, and now defending f4. Black is winning. Queen c2, bishop out, bishop b1, c5, played, but bishop takes d4, is actually a brilliant move. If the rooks come off, you don't take queen e2 check and it is game over. King h1 and now you can take on g3. And g2 is mate. It's going to be mate very soon. So c5 played. Black is still winning. Knight free. Take. Taking on a7. He gets rid of the bishop. Takes. Queen back. Check. No need to take this. Or else you just allow this. There's no point. No. Just king h8. Calm. There's no attack for Carlson. Knight f3. Knight takes g5 and rook h1 is uh, looking dangerous. Taking on g3. With this capture, queen f2 is now a problem. Because after rook h1, queen f2 played and now the queen's come off. One option was actually to play king takes, then maybe rook h1. But there's a really cool tactic here I want to show you. Take, take, and now take. Brilliant move. Because the king is about to be pinned. Queen d6 and you're going to pick up the knight. f6, pick it up, or even rook e8 as well. That picks it up too. 
F takes G3, Rook H1, now the Queen's come off. Really cool move that Levon found. Queen F2 check, take, take, take. Rook A1, attack the bishop, check. King G8, bishop is under attack, bring it back. But now Rook C8 and black is taking over. Rook takes C3 next, Knight F4 is next as well. Knight D4, Knight F4 attack the bishop first, then he can take the pawn. Bishop F5, Rook takes C3 and Magnus resigned. The two rooks are just too powerful and... Well, it just feels like it's going to be mate very soon. You've got to play a move like rook h2. Because you can't do knight e6, because that's going to be mate. If you go king g3, rook g2 is mate. And if you go back, then we have mate here. Knight e1 is possible, but it's going to be mate very soon. You can take back. Rook e2 as well. That's why after rook takes e3, you might have to play a weird move like rook h2, but then check, you can just take him off. And then black is going to be up way too much. By the way, here's YouTube's suggestion for what to watch next. But if you don't like their selection, you might prefer Ali Reza Frugia beats Magnus Carlsen in 29 seconds. This was a bullet game. However, if you don't like that choice, you might like this one. How did Magnus Carlsen play against the Sicilian at the World Cup? Thanks for watching.